All right. Welcome, folks. I want to give a introduction to the cancellation law in abstract algebra. So let G be your group. We'll write this group in uh, multiplicative notation, although maybe at the end I'll, I'll say a few things in additive notation. Okay. So let's say A, X, and Y are group elements. Okay. Now the cancellation stop law says the following. If A times X is equal to A times Y, then the conclusion that you could draw is that x is equal to y, okay? And there's another version of this. Also, if x times a is equal to y times a, then again, x is equal to y. Let's call those um, you know, one and two. All right, so let's prove one. The proof of two is, is very similar. So suppose a times x is equal to a times y. We're trying to prove that x is equal to y, okay? So we're in a group. There's only one operation, you know, that we're writing as multiplication, but it could be any operation. So you sort of want to think of quote unquote dividing by A, or you sort of want to think of, of crossing off A from both sides to get down to X equals Y. But you can't just cross off A, you can't divide by A, there's no division. There's just a group operation, which here we're calling multiplication. What you can do is you can use the inverses, okay? So we can use the inverse of A. So we're going to multiply both sides by A inverse on the left. Okay. So these two things are equal. AX and AY are equal. So if I do the same thing to one side, I still get the same, I still get the same answer as if I do that same thing to the other side. So here what I'm doing to both sides is I'm multiplying by A inverse. Okay. And yeah, A inverse times AX is certainly the same as A inverse times AY, just because AX and AY are the same. So if I do identical operations to, to the same thing, I get the same thing. All right. If I want to be super careful, you know, by associativity, I could regroup things. Could get practice applying these uh, things like identity, associativity, inverses in these groups. Okay. What does this give? This gives that the identity times x is equal to the identity times y, just because a inverse times a is always equal to the identity. And Maybe I could I could even put this all on one line. You know, the identity times x is just x, and the identity times y is just y. All right. I think it's good to conclude in your proofs. So write down the very very last step at the end of your proof. All right. Proof of two we won't do together, but I'll get you started. You know, suppose that x a is equal to y a. Therefore, um, now we're going to multiply by a inverse on the right to both sides. Okay, and it continues from there, although we won't write it out together. And maybe you can see how that would go to allow us to conclude that x is equal to y. Let me wrap up with some comments. Um, so 
Okay. Adjective notation would take this and it would be a plus x equals a plus y. Okay, so if our group were in adjective notation, that's how we would write that. And so the cancellation law would say if a plus x is equal to a plus y, then x equals y. And in additive notation, this would be x plus a equals y plus a. If x plus a is equal to y plus a, then x is equal to y. Okay, there's a good question in the chat. Which steps would be reasonable to skip? Um, and my answer is, there's no right answer for which steps to skip or not. When you first get started, practice showing every single step. But then as you learn more, you'll realize which steps you can skip. And if you skip, I don't know, like, you know, um, either of these two steps, you know, that's fine. So, so you don't need to keep showing every step, but it's good practice to make sure that you can if somebody asks you to. And yeah, I don't need you to show all of these steps, um, but um, uh, show, show whichever ones you feel are the most relevant or the most necessary. It's a little bit more of a stylistic choice. Okay, let me say one last thing in this video. Okay. So, Let's say we have a group and it has five elements, A, B, C, D, E. Maybe I'll, I'll make this a little bit more of a mystery. Okay. Pretend we have a group, it has five, <laughs> we have an alleged group. Okay, we have an alleged group, it has five elements. Okay. And let's say I don't tell you much of the multiplication table. All I tell you is, you know, what is, um, say, uh, D multiplied by various things. So maybe D times A is B, D times B is C, D times um, C is E, D times D is A, and let's say D times E is, um, is B. So I have this alleged group, and I tell you, you know, what is D times various things. So the question is, can this be a group? You might think I haven't given you enough information, but already I have given you enough information to know this is not a group on five elements. So no, this is not a group on five elements. Okay. And the reason is as follows. The cancellation law, it's almost like a Sudoku-like property. The cancellation law tells us that in a group, in the multiplication table, all of the elements have to be represented in any row or any column. And I don't have all of the elements represented here, right? Who am I missing? I'm missing D, okay? and I have two copies of B. That's the real problem, that I have two copies of B in this column, okay? Because what I have is, can we write this in colors? Right here, this is saying that D times A is equal to B. And in blue, this is saying that D times E is equal to B, right? I told you that D times A is equal to B, and then I've told you that D times E is equal to B, right? Okay, so let's keep going. Um, so in particular, D times A is equal to D times E. Okay, now what does the cancellation law allow me to say? Since D times A is equal to D times E. This implies that A is equal to E by the cancellation law. Right? I can sort of cancel the D on, on the left-hand side 
of both just by multiplying by the inverse on the left-hand side, right? So A and E are not distinct elements. Um, okay, so I don't have a group on five elements, right? Because I have both two copies of B here, the cancellation law would fail to imply that A and E are, are the same. And, uh, and so we, we wouldn't have a multiplication table for a group of size five. All right, so this cancellation law implies this Sudoku-like property, by which I mean in the multiplication table for a group, every column and every row has all of the distinct elements of that group appearing exactly once. An, an element can't appear twice on any row or column. 